Axles have been removed from the car, and uh, I found no cracks or anything. They lo look just perfect to just be sandblasted and painted for this project. I have them now here on the floor, and I will remove all the old bushings and burn them out. Some of them can be pressed out with the hydraulic press. So I will try to do that next. One day as I was cruising with my country music store In came a red-haired lady, she was all cried out and sore She walked right in and grabbed me just right out of the blue And said I need someone to listen and this someone will be you Said, I know that men are stupid. I know so now all the bushings are out. About half of them had to be burned to get them out, but in those I pressed them all. It was a struggle with some that was so badly rusted, so I have to change them. I have a, a lot of those. I only have one rear spindle right now, and it's from a 124 wagon model and uh, I can tell you more about the swap I'm going to put some bigger hubs wheel hubs from a 210 wagon model they have bigger wheel bearing and the outer CV joint has bigger spline so they can hold the power much better so I will, I will tell you more about the custom work that has to be done to fit those later but now all of this, these parts that I have removed the bushings from is going to the paint, paint work place, fan hater, molery. It's my neighbor, Neumann's Greve, that is going to sandblast and paint all these parts for me. So let's see how that turns out later. So I've started to remove all the original electric cables from this chassis. The Koei electronic has very much electronic stuff on it that it that you don't need when you diesel swap. So the only cables needed is actually this start signal, the purple one, and the green wire for the temp sensor in the dash. So we see the engine temperature and uh, then you need some plus cables from the battery side to this side for the glow plug, plug relay so I will make some cables for that and I can show you here how I connect it so this is the connector that goes I have taken this from a diesel Mercedes and here is the relay five cylinder five plugs right there here are the the pins with numbers T L A 31 50 and 15 and the cables have different colors 15 to ignition 50 start signal 31 ground L A dash light so you see when it glows and T is for temp sensor I usually don't use the temp sensor at all it works fine without it it just makes the relay know how what temperature the engine is so it hasn't glow all the way when the engine is hot and here inside I've removed the dash and uh, taken away some extra cables the only thing I need to change now is the ignition key so I have taken that out and I am, I am going to get that from a friend that has one from a diesel one so I can show you that later also so now I will connect the glow plug relay and see what's up next one more thing about the electronics <coughs> is this harness 
This is from the stock engine M102. It's the plus cable for the battery and this connector which goes in this one. Let's go to the dash and it's the oil pressure signal and the oil level signal. And here is also the starter, starter signal that goes into this connector. So it's a very simple, simple swap when you do from gasoline to diesel, with the electronics at least. So for building this kind of project, you need a lot of custom and racing parts. And this time Strongflex is sponsoring me with some bushings. And I have used these on many projects before. They are really good quality and good fit. Custom made polyurethane bushings for the whole, whole suspension and all the parts needed for a 190 Mercedes. And if you are looking for some polyurethane parts, engine mounts, bushings or anything, go check out Strongflex website. And if you enter Blumpu5, then you get 5% discount on your parts. So you should definitely check that out. I will show you later when I install all these parts. And I will use this uh, used Holset HX35. Really good condition, only driven one summer, I think. Bought it from a friend. It's with the internal wastegate. And that works really good. I'm not going to give the engine so much boost, so this will work perfectly. And this is a custom made billet flywheel made by Eagle Clutches in Vasa in Kuni. Very good quality. I have bought almost 10 of these to my projects, different cars, cars and they work really good. Only thing you need to do is to assemble this starting gear. I will show you right here how it's done. You just heat it up, take it away from our original flywheel and just drop it on the, the new one. And after you have installed the starting gear, you have to drill. These holes are marked already but you need to drill them all the way up and they come here between so they lock the starting gear in place also then I got this used SUX 765 pressure plate it, had, it has got some damage but I re resurfaced it in the lathe I took away a half millimeter and uh, then I had to take some a little bit material from the flywheel also so I get the right pressure on the clutch. The clutch plate will be a Tenaki from Badass Parts, Finland. I haven't got it yet, but I will show you later when I has, have it here at my garage. And this is the gearbox I will use. It's from a E46 2 liter diesel, and they are also from the E39 530 diesel. It has this 10 spline 35 millimeter clutch axle, and these hold very good power. I will do a bellhouse swap on this and that will be shown in some later episodes. I have a jig to make, make that work. So I will show you all that later. So now all the electronics are almost sorted out. I made a, a new harness for the glow plugs to the relay. I used the original one from the OM605 engine. And uh, sometimes you have to check the cables, bend them a little bit and look if the plastic on the cable is hard. They usually crack, crack and fall apart, the plastics on these C model cars. So you have to check the cables if you can use them. So I made a new harness for the glowing. Measured so they all have the right distance and also the connector for the temp sensor is in the same harness goes here and the relay is now here mounted to the chassis and the whole cables are done I only have to make some some vacuum hoses for the key so the engine stops at the key and uh, as you know, like I said, this car had an automatic gearbox before. So when you have the automatic gearbox, you can start the car if the shifter isn't in 
P position, forking position. So we have to cut this old harness that goes to the gearbox. Looks like this. And you just cut it inside the car. It comes through the floor, through a hole behind the gas pedal. And you have to cut it, cut it somewhere inside. And you find these two violet cables with a white. One has a white stripe and the other is violet. And these are a lot thicker than the other ones here. So just cut every cable and you link these two to each other inside the car. You throw this piece away and you link the cables to each other and just put them somewhere so they don't connect to the chassis or anything. Isolate them with some tape or something. And I have removed the pedal. It only has the brake pedal when it's automatic. Surprise. And, uh, and I got this from a ma manual car. It's the bo both brake pedal and clutch pedal in same, same piece. Just five, four nuts and one bolt. So you get it loose and just swap it. And I'm waiting for a new master cylinder for that one. And also the slave, slave cylinder for the gearbox. And as you see here, I cut the tunnel to make more room for the gearbox because the BMW gearbox is much higher at the end, rear end. And then I will make a custom shifter which I will mount straight in the tunnel. And I will show you that when I do that later. So you see how that works. So I loosen the sump just to check if everything is okay. It looks very good. The oil is very good color and there is no, no trash in the oil pump filter. The chain tension is good and no, no parts has come loose or anything. I think the sump has never been opened before. And I found no chunks or anything in the in the bottom of it. I think this will be a really good good engine to take some more power from. Now I have cleaned all the surfaces here, removed the old paper gasket. Luckily it, uh, whole, the whole gasket came with the sump, so no pieces left here on the block. And I have degreased it now and and will put some some of this Loctite 5900. I use this everywhere on the engine. It's a really good, really, really good gasket glue, even between the exhaust manifold and turbocharger. It doesn't melt or burn or anything. It seals very good. Even if you have some metal gasket doesn't seal, then you can use this to seal it up. It holds very good. So let's put this back together. One very important thing when you tune these engines, both 605 and 606, you have to lock the inlet side camshaft's sprocket because it's only heated onto the camshaft. If you don't lock it some, in some way, it comes loose and it starts to come out and then the chain will start to eat it and then it will might pop loose or something like that. It has never came loose all the way for me, but it has came so much so the chain has started to eat the sprocket and it can destroy the whole engine if you don't lock the sprocket and I do it like this I drill a hole five millimeter hole here between the camshaft and the sprocket here is the line so I drill a five millimeter hole and I tap it with M6 thread but I don't tap it all the way through so then I put some Loctite in the hole and I use these small stop screws that I thread here and when I didn't tap it all the way through and I can tighten it so then it locks locks the sprocket bolt so it can't spin and it can't come out and it didn't come out from this side either because I didn't tap it all the way through. So this is a very good and working solution for this problem. One important thing to think about when you install these bearing caps is to not tighten these bolts 
with the impact wrench or something because all the threads have filled with oil now and if you try to screw them inside fast then the oil can't come out and then you will destroy the threads inside so when you screw them by hand you can feel that the oil slowly comes out and you can't put them back fast because the oil is zippering slowly out and always tighten them a little at a time so you don't break the cams and another thing that often fails on these engines is this damper wheel on the end of the crankshaft it's only a small piece of sheet metal that keeps it in place in the original place here and uh, when you start clot clutch kicking and revving these engines more than original so that small piece of metal fails and this damper wheel spins and destroys the end of the crankshaft so I do the same thing here as on the camshaft I drill first you have to grind a small flat spot here because they are not on the same level so you grind a small flat spot and then you drill five millimeters hole and tap M6 and after you have done that, it's also a good thing to change this, this main bolt that keeps the damper in place. The original is 8.8 8 .8, and I change it to 10.9. It's M18 by one and a half thread, 50 millimeter long. When I have the engine in place, I have made a special tool to lock, lock the crankshaft and then I tighten this bolt with 300 Newton meters with Loctite. That's a good way to secure the, the damper. And I forgot to say the torque on these bearing caps is 15 Newton meters and on these three bolts is 18 Newton meters. Right, so this was the second episode of my series. Hope you like what I'm doing. I'm doing my best, my English. <laughs> I haven't studied English since only preschool <laughs> and the high school of fun either. The only English I know is just from reading on the internet and playing San Andreas. Keep up, motherfucker! Give me 15, motherfucker! I'll write it down in a second! I ain't gonna pencil whip you fast, sucker! <laughs> so, I'm doing my best. I asked on my Instagram what you people think if I should speak Swedish and have English text, people voted for more for that I would speak English instead. And it saves time also for Uttu, who is editing this for me in Norway. I was really surprised how good the first episode went. And I hope we can make all these next episodes even better. Or as, as good as the first one. And uh, if you want to know no, no more and, and earlier about what's happening here, you should definitely follow me on Instagram and also Uttus, Uttus Instagram. He's living in Norway right now and studying for Stuntman. He has a lot of crazy videos and stuff on his, his channel. We will try to continue doing this series every week and sometimes it can take longer than a week. So just like and subscribe. Check out also the sponsors in the description. Stay tuned!